We're starting with a picture of uh, old Rouse's Point, and uh, for some reason it's not in full living color. It's only in black and white, so that probably means it's kind of old. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. I was just looking to, <laughs> to show okay. the black and whiteness of it. And we're at the Rouse's Point American Legion Post 912, and they're having a, a history event today put on by the Historical Society here in Rouse's Point. Uh, and if you're coming to an event like this, you're probably going to find the village historian. <laughs> and I think we found him. What's your name, young man? My name's Brandon Racine. All right. Now, I remember uh, it wasn't too long ago, and we lost her uh, a year or two, maybe a year. It'll be two years. January 27th. All right, Donna Racine, and uh, she any relation to you? Yep, she was my mother. She got me interested in history. Um, I worked with her for a couple years before she passed and spent a lot of time with her in the historical office. Got to learn the way things worked and, and answered emails for her, and communications, stuff like that. And heard all the stories. She liked to talk. <laughs> yeah, she liked to talk. Yeah, she liked to talk. She could talk your ear off. She knew so much. She was like a computer. She knew names of people and where they lived, their children, the color of the wallpaper in their house. And, you know, it's amazing. I, you probably never met Addie Shields, but Addie Shields would... I heard a lot about Addie. She was like that, too. Yeah. Yeah, my mother talked greatly about her. Yeah, you just uh, talk on something and she'd... And she'd be off on tangents, but she never lost track of where she was supposed to be. So she'd go off on a tangent and then come back and continue on and on until she went to the next tangent. But she just they used to have a movies night in Albert that she attended that they you know they enjoyed. She was a great good 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 soul. Yeah, yeah, and you know Peg Barcombe and John Ross and they, uh, these are some pictures from John Ross that you were looking at. Uh -huh. That's why I brought them in because they're real old and. Uh, um, some of them people that can add to the idea of them and we want to just try to record our history and keep it as long as we can. Okay, um, now there's a village historian's office. Uh, is that ever open and where people can come in and look at this sure, collection? I'm there Tuesdays 10 to 12, uh, mainly just to check the computers and whatnot, but my main hours are Thursday 10 to 3. 10 to 3 on Thursday. Yeah, and if you can't make it at those times, if you call the village office, They'll get a hold of me. I can make a special appointment for you. Um, I have some Rouse people, family members, coming down the week after next. Okay, I think it was boy, 88 probably, and they had the Rouse family, family reunion. reunion. Yeah, that's the last time he was here, and he was, um, I think he said he was in sixth grade as Steve Rouse. So I found some, I've been doing some research on Jock Rouse and his family, and um, he wants to come and verify some of the information I've come across. I've also found the map of the Nova Scotia Land Act, which was the tracks that our revolutionary soldiers were granted for their time served and their rank. And I've identified all the land that Jacques Rouse owned in the area because he got what he was awarded, but he also bought from other soldiers for cash their land. So, And I've got quite a few other relic, relics and artifacts that I've obtained through the library, the Dodge Memorial, um, from the War of 1812. Um, I've got um, McDonough's original lithograph print. I've got the uh, taking of Fort Ticonderoga. I've got a land grant with a Re Revolutionary War medal of a family, their, their plot of land. So quite a bit, quite a bit. Okay, and that's all up there in the village historian's yep. office? Yep. yep. Which is at where the village office is. It's upstairs, so well, it's easy, know, I, easy to I, find. I've acquired the other end of the building to expand our collection of artifacts, and it's like a little museum. We have tables set up where you can go through. Um, we have all the press Republicans, except for one year or two years. That used to be in the library, but we took them into the historical office because people were cutting pages out of them. Ouch. Yeah, and we'd use them quite often for like the Was that, soldiers. The, press? Was that the press or the North Countrymen? North Countrymen. Okay, North Countrymen. Okay, yeah. But we've People. been using them for the pictures of the soldiers on the telephone poles. Okay. Because we got, you know, their, yeah. their wartime pictures, and they're a great asset to have. Yes, yes, and uh, of course, uh, North Countrymen is one of the papers that's available online now through that history. Right, so you can do a quick search, and then I can go to the books, and we either take photographs and blow them up or copy them. 
Yeah, one of the things that you find when you go to that online site is that sometimes they're their pictures and the page is turned a little bit, so you're only getting a, a crease on the corner. Yeah. But at least it tells you the year and the date, and you can find it. Right. It's a great, useful tool. It is. It is. It's awesome. And of course, here in Rouse's Point, uh, and Jacques Rouse is the guy who's credit. Uh, that's your phone that's making those noises? Or yeah, you, I know. All right. All right, we're back. Uh, the phone call has been handled. Uh, Jacques Rouse is the guy who founded this. He had a, a little ferry, as I recall, that uh, took people across the, the lake over to... Uh, yeah, he had a... Um, um, and basically his home was between where the fort and the bridge is now. I've located that area. Um, he had like a, a bed and breakfast of the time. It was a little a spot where people traveling down the lake on by boat or by canoe could stop in and get a meal uh, get a bed for the night and it was a trading post and it was also noted as a hangout for outlaws oh. you know <laughs> the smugglers are yep, a place exactly. for smugglers to stop in yeah good so boys was was he a veteran at all or was he, did, he didn't get any of this property the, the, yes he was a, a veteran of the revolutionary war and war of 1812. Okay. Um, i have a, a copy of his conscription in the Continental Army hanging on the wall in my office as a, I believe, a captain. Oh, wow. Uh, so you said he bought some land. Now, what happened was uh, these soldiers were, were given land. 80-acre land, land yeah. tract. But they had to possess it. They had to get here and possess it. So right. the ones who didn't, uh, people like Jacques Rouse, and I know Pliny Moore did the same thing yeah, in Champlain. Exactly. They, went out, they bought it, so they expanded their own properties. Right. They made their empire on it. Right. And some of the soldiers came down and, and were granted the land and then turned around and sold it because they were there for basically the money. They didn't need the land. But Jacques was left in a position where he couldn't go back to Canada after the war because he was branded a traitor by the English. Right. So, yeah, but what happened after the Revolutionary War is the, uh, the Canadians uh, ended up populating uh, north of the border here with a lot of people that were... Uh, sympathetic to their to the British well, size. The refugees at the point. Uh, yeah, in our side, we uh, we took the the other people, so we populated it with people that were basically enemies uh, 20 years ago or yep. whatever. And that was all through the Nova Scotia Land Act. Right. And uh, I have a map of the original uh, parcels and the numbers of them. That's how I was able to track down which land Jock Grouse owned, because when I became a historian, I was interested in if any of the property that I had in Ross's Point belonged to Jacques Rouse and it happened that my mother's house that I just recently sold after she passed was on one of his lots. Okay. So did she know that? No, she didn't. Uh -huh. And I believe that my house that I live in now on Maple Street was on one of his, little, uh, his tracks. Okay. So I, I, it's just that uh, when I became a historian to learn the history of Rouse's point, I read everything I could on it from John Rouse had written and John Ross and through Peg Barco. Yeah. So, yeah. Just don't worry about this. I'll take care of this. Okay, and uh, of course, Don O'Boyle kept that legacy going until, uh, until Don Racine uh, took over after Don's passing. And so, Ross's Point's been very lucky to have some people who've been very interested in the, in the village's history. Actually, Heather Ross, um, they just sold her house. About a year and, uh, ago, yeah. Yeah, she just donated two books to me. One was from the architect that built Fort Montgomery. It starts out with the day the first spike was was the first hole was dug, the first nail was driven, and um, it's it's got all his computations and how he measured and how the fort was laid out. And then I've got another book that she donated, which was like the daily log of the fort, who was on duty, who was doing what. It's got all the entertainment brochures for the soldiers of the time. It tells what the weather, the temperature was. It was it was a great asset to come across. Is it fragile? It must be. Yeah, the ledgers are, are, are. Yeah, they're they're coming apart and they're worn. Actually, I think they were out in the shed behind the house. So they've been through the weather, not not rain, but they've got the humidity and everything else. So. Yeah, and then then she donated um, a hydrofoil that John Ross and his father, her father and her grandfather built, that took the 1928 Saratoga Race Championship. And it's, we have it, Benny and I put it in the train museum. It's for, it, it's on display. Benny the, who? Benny Arnold. <laughs>
Has he been an asset in your venture here? Oh, great. He's, <laughs> he's my leg man, and he, he, he does everything. He's, he's a, he's a, I don't know where the train station would be without him or where I would be in my office. I mean, if I don't have a picture or an article, he does. He's the go-to man. <laughs> he does have a, a couple dozen photos hanging around, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, more than a couple dozen, especially railroad pictures and whatnot. I came across some railroad pictures the other day that I copied for him that he hadn't seen. And uh, he adds, he gives, he takes, and it works out great. Yeah, if you find any of that Fitch's restaurant, I'm sure he'd be happy to see that. I, yeah, I, actually I got pictures from the Ross family that were glass plates that we had developed and then some of them was from the prince of wales visit i think it was 1919 the one that became king of england and then he gave it up and then we got elizabeth uh -huh. and they were writing a book on him in england and they contacted me if we had any any pictures or anything and i had a picture that we developed from the ross family that had him wearing a cowboy hat that they'd never seen before so I sent that over to England. It's supposed to be in the new book, and they're ecstatic about it. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah, that's <laughs> and I, I had um, another lady that was interested in the artist that did the artwork in our church, uh -huh. the Catholic church, because apparently that's some of his best work. He's a known European artist, and he was border bound. I think it was 1928. And where the old nursing home was under the wallpaper, they found some of his paintings in there in the dining room. The, I think it's the seven or eight hills of Rome, they call it. So I photographed those and I photographed the church and I sent them off to Italy. And they're supposed to be coming out in a book on, I think it's Matteo, Matello. I'm not quite sure of the pronunciation of his name. But. Yeah, we did a story with uh, Monsignor, who's last named. <laughs> uh, Bef you know, many years ago, 25 years ago, we did a story on the inside of St. Patrick's, and he went through that Matteo, whatever his name is. Yeah, uh, I guess know, apparently he um, he did a lot of his uh, his studio was above the old post office of the Chapman Block, which was my great grandfather's. Yeah, so he was a world-renowned artist, yeah. and he was in here here in Rouse's Point for for a little while. Apparently, all the, all his work in the church is still there, except the one over the altar, which has been repainted. Right. And recently, it's come to my attention that it was repainted, not because it was falling apart or decrepit, but because it portrayed purgatory, which they don't believe in anymore. And it had like hell and stuff. Oh, okay. so maybe it was a little too graphic for the little ones. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't remember it, but I, I did find a, copies of pictures of it on old postcards that I sent over to Europe for the new book. Okay, well, if I find that, uh, that interview we did, I'll send you a, a link on that so you can see it. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah. Because it probably has some fill in information I could forward. So that'd be perfect. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I know when we talked to Don O'Boyle again a couple decades ago, she was complaining about space. So it's nice that you uh, have been able to expand your... Oh, my mother had the office packed with artifacts that we've now been able to, to show and we can rotate and uh, just get it out to the public. Um, I, they are talking about moving me downstairs into the old garage where we could have more display cases. It would be handier for people coming in and out. Right. I See, right now I have a display going in the hallway going into my office of souvenirs from the turn of the century, like the late 1800s, 1900, sold in Ross's Point, like paddles for canoes, um, Indian artifacts, it says Ross's Point, New York on them, just, just to bring in, um, you know, some of the, the past culture. Yeah, and you're upstairs and there's no elevator there, so. Oh, 17 stairs. <laughs> you count them every time you go up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, for the people who have, the, sometimes have the most interest are the older folks and making yeah, it up down those it seems stairs. like there is no younger people, the younger generation doesn't really care about history anymore at this point. Well, they probably said that about uh, Probably us when we were younger yeah, too, yeah. Right, yeah so. Busy living our lives and having yeah. fun. And you get to a certain age, you say, hey, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, uh, well, you start to feel your age. <laughs> and you look back at all the people you know and, and have known and you see the picture albums of, of them graduating and fighting for our country and just being Americans. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, anything else that uh, you should tell us about here? Um, that our train station in Ross's Point is open and it is a wonderful museum. Benny has decorated a lot of it. Hours? 
Our right. train station. No, 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 the hours, H O. Oh. Um, they're not open right now. They're closed okay. for the winter. But okay. when they are open, I believe it's Saturday and Sunday. It's like 9 to 12 and uh, 12 to 2 or something like that. Um, it's free. Um, it's It's got a little bit of everything. You can bring your kids. And we've got railroad. It's got fire department. Yeah. Artifacts. Of, we've got the hydrofoil that took the championship. In 1928, got a little bit of everything. A little yeah, bit of so, the Holland, a little bit of the Harmons. Yeah, the places that were once so much a part of the village here and are no longer here. Yeah, so, and it, it's nice that the village was able to get that train station and turn it they into did a this museum. Beautiful job getting it together. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's quite a sight. Okay. Most people overlook it because it's on Upper Prout Street, but you can't miss it once you see it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not in the Lake Street area, so they just kind of drive through the village and don't even know it's there. But Yeah, and I'd also like to say that you're always welcome in my office. If there's anything I can do for you, um, I don't really do genealogy, I do history, but uh, family names and a note and whatnot, I can help and lead you in the right direction. And feel free to give me a holler. Okay, and i I got to close with this uh, parting memory that came uh, to mind when talking to you here. Your father used to be our, our milk man. Yep, Racine Boat Milk Service. <laughs> and he'd pick up those uh, heavy milk cans and toss them around like oh, they yeah. were. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a job when they hauled milk by milk cans. Let me tell you, you do that every day. You, If you didn't have muscles when you started, you sure did But after a couple of months, and he had the muscles. <laughs> yeah, and you can't forget my grandfather, Fred Racine, when he'd get mad and throw a wrench in the lake. <laughs> Pinch his finger, there go the wrench. <laughs> Yeah, so Racine's Garage was on the uh, corner of uh, Champlain and Lake for many, many years, where the uh, Stewart's is now. Yeah. And uh, uh, Alfred Racine Jr. was uh, this man's father and uh, our, our milk uh, man many, many years ago. Yeah. And then right across the street from it was Alex Laundry, which was my great uncle. Oh, right, right. The Shell your, Station. Yeah, on your mother's side there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's... Uh, Pretty much gone now. All that's left is that little stone building next to it. Yeah, remember that was a laundromat for many yeah. years when I was little. Yeah. Right across from the Saxony. Yeah, if you came down the Champlain Street, you'd drive right into it, so you couldn't miss it. So basically, um, I'm, I'm born and brought up in Ross's Point, New York. Um, I've traced my lineage to the Rouse family. Um, Mary Louise Rouse married Jean Baptiste Landry. She was my sixth removed great grandmother, and she was five years younger than Jacques Rouse. So I'm of Rouse blood. <laughs> okay. And uh, Landry's and the Laundry's. Uh, there's same, no, name. same name. <laughs> same name. Same Har name. Harmon Laundry, when he came over from Canada, changed it to Landry. One of his stuns. Stayed Landry, that's where we got all the Harry Landry's that fought in World War One, World War Two, in Vietnam for us. All Marines. <laughs> yeah, I remember Louis was uh, Landry and Landry, and he'd answer to both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Louis's a good man. He is, he is. Yeah. Okay. I see him go by pretty often with his dog every morning, going to Stewart's for coffee. Yeah, it's nice to see that he's doing so well. Yeah, yeah it is good to see Louis. All right. Thanks for chatting with us. Thank you for having your time for me. All right. Okay, we're looking at a calendar for 2023, and here we are in 2022, so this is probably next year's calendar. And we always like to talk to new people that we've never talked to before. And <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Have we ever talked to you before, sir? Uh, I don't think so. I okay. think this might be the very first time. <laughs> All right, what's, your, what's your name, young man? Robert St. John. Robert St. John, okay. And I know, uh, looking at Facebook, I saw that you had this calendar for sale, and you still got a few left? Still have a few left, yes. We had um, 100 printed up, and uh, we've been selling them pretty good. And we we do have a few that, that are left. All right, and uh, <coughs> people like to know what the price is before they buy something. That, uh, I believe it's uh, $15, I 15? believe, for the, uh, the, the calendar for next year, yep. And for some reason... 2009 probably wasn't very popular because we've got a whole <laughs> pile of 2009 calendars yeah. left. Right, yep. <laughs> and the same price, or do you know? No, that's at, that's at a, a cheaper price I, right <laughs> offhand. I, I can't remember, but it's... Uh, clearance, clearance sale right, on the clearance 2009 sale. calendar. <laughs> but it has a lot of pictures of, of the village back, back way back when. Well, uh, so. if you pay attention, let's see... Uh, 
August first is a fir- is the first is a Friday a Saturday. Let's see what this year is. Yeah, yeah. August first for next year is going to be uh, Tuesday. So it won't be next year, but every once in a while, right, the calendar is going to be duplicated, duplicated here. Right. Every seven years, <laughs> yeah, yeah. give or take. A <laughs> right, so keep them in that way. Then when it comes up, you know, just, just cross out the year. And right, <laughs> and just, just put a put new year in it and, then, and then continue year. with the dates. That's right. <laughs> okay, so this is a, a, a Rouse's Point Champlain Historical Society 2023 calendar. So... Uh, your group is, uh, and the first one here is Village of Rosses Point Historical Calendar. Is your group officially the Rosses Point Champlain Historical Society? Yes, or? yes, and it has been. Uh, the reason why this one was stated Rosses Point is because it was just pictures from uh, Rosses Point. Point. <clears throat> right. Okay. So you got a picture on the cover here of Fort Montgomery, and it's by Nellie Chevalier, who is a well-known artist. Artist here in Rosses Point. Yeah. Yes. And uh, didn't they own the Saxony for a while? Was that the, didn't they? I, can't uh, I believe so. I think I'm, they did, huh? I'm, I'm not sure, but I do believe yeah, that. I think so. uh, then I'm going to thumb through here. It. So I'm going to buy this in here, so if I lick my fingers to turn the pages, oh, okay. don't get upset. Okay. <laughs> uh, Edmund Lon- Landry. Now I'm talking to <laughs> about the Landrys and Landrys being the same people. And this mm-hmm. was a painting. Hotel Holland and Wedding in Rouse's Point. Any no. idea what year that might have uh, depicted? No, I, uh, Brandon would probably know better. Um, I just remember uh, uh, Edmund when uh, when I was a, a kid that uh, had his little shop down on uh, State Street, Montgomery Street or whatever, and you could walk by the, uh, the building, big glass windows, and he'd be in there painting or whatever or had paintings on display. Uh, there, so. Okay, so this is a January picture and very nice, colorful. And then we go to Debbie Callisti. Another local. Uh, yeah, Debbie's uh, back in the area, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And this is the uh, Rouse's Point DNH Railroad Station. That's our February mm-hmm. picture. March is the Anchorage Hotel, and uh, this is an old one here by Tina LeCount, who is the mm-hmm. art teacher now at uh, Northeastern Clinton. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it almost uh, was in the Masonic days there before it became right. the Anchorage. Right, yeah, yeah. So. The Anchorage, of course, is now gone. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's burnt uh, about uh, three decades ago now, as time marches yes, on. It does. Hard to believe. But Hard to believe it's been that long. Yes, really. But uh, that was certainly a mainstay, and they rebuilt it. Not nope. anything like looking like it did here, but uh, they rebuilt nope. it, and that one burnt. And so many of our buildings in Champlain and Ross's Point are no longer with us, but here's one that's still with us. It's a W. Callisti building. Um, a painting, I should oh, say. Oh, yeah, the old stone, old stone uh, store, uh, store down at the end of uh, Champlain Street. Yeah, and you can still see in the, <coughs> the lakeside where they uh, bring in items to, off the off Lake Champlain. So yep. It's, it's right there across the uh, diagonal from Stewart's, across from where the Saxony was. Yep. And here's Ralph's Point Elementary School. Mrs. Rock, it says. Uh, Sean, uh, let's see, Sean LeClaire. Sean LeClaire did this one. And Mrs. Rock's class, I guess. Yeah, there it is. It's Sean LeClaire, sixth grade, Ross Point Elementary. <coughs> uh, Sean, I'm thinking, I don't know no, if that's. Uh, this guy graduated in '94 or, or not. Uh, I can't remember. No, I'm not sure. familiar with the name. It might be. This guy graduated in '94, so if he was in sixth grade, this would be about '88, hmm. and that would be about the year of the Ross reunion. So <coughs> right, could, right. A Ross reunion, I should say. Yeah. <coughs> I'm talking with Brandon about uh, John Ross and Jacques Rouse, and yes, <laughs> <laughs> make sure you pronounce yeah, it right. That's right. And here's another Debbie Callisti. It's the old <laughs> schoolhouse. Yep. Uh, it became Arist, McKenna, and Harrison. Yep. And, uh, up until 
I don't know what period, but for a long time, even though Eris uh, grew and expanded, you could still make out this original building. Then at the end, you, you couldn't any longer. Right. <coughs> but uh, yeah, it was for many in the years, late sixties, could. I think, when they tore it all down and yeah. did the front admin building. Yeah, and of course now, much to our dismay, it's, it's nothing all gone. is there. Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Another building that's no longer with us, the Hotel Holland. This is the Debbie Callisti artwork. Uh, the buildings that surround it are not depicted, but uh, the Hotel Holland, certainly a, a part of history of people history, yep. uh, grew up in Rouse's Point. This is certainly an important <coughs> part of it. A good uh, residence for a lot of the uh, railroad yes. Yes, that's, uh, people. Yep. So... Uh, I believe One of them it became a, a <laughs> part owner here when, yeah. when Mrs. Laterno's husband died. Uh, mm -hmm. Dick Laterno's mother was a widow, and uh, a railroad man ended up uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. ended up marrying her. Yep. Marrying her first, uh, uh, Jilson was his name, right? Yes. Yeah, Hank Jilson. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mr. Jilson. Yeah. And here's another Nelly Chevalier, Marn's Inn. This mm -hmm. uh, building doesn't look like this anymore, but no. it's, it's no. uh, still in town. Yep. It's the same apartment building. building there now. Yep. <coughs> yep. And we're going to flip another one here. Uh, camera cord's getting in the way. Another downtown picture with the St. Patrick's Church in the background. Edmund Landry. It's another one of his. Yep. And St. Patrick's Church. <laughs> when they had the siren on top of the <laughs> cupola there or whatever. Well, I think the train, sta the, uh, excuse me, the fire station used to be in that area too. Yep, right door. next door yeah. uh, to it. Yeah. Yep. The Thurber Inn. Mm -hmm. And uh, this building is still here. And this is uh, Sean Blow. Sixth grade, Ralph's Point, Mrs. Rock's class. Yep. Does Sean Blow know his pictures in here? I don't know, to be honest <laughs> with you. Maybe you'll find out right now. Yeah. And Jonathan Zwart. Jonathan Zwart, I don't know if he knows his pictures in here. Do, uh, sixth grade, Dewey Tavern. Uh, John, I think he graduated in 95, 96, somewhere mm. in there. Next to, somewhere between my two older sons. So that's Dewey Tavern. And in the back is just a... a out of, of all of that. All so, that. Yep. If people want to support the museum, does money go toward the museum, does it? Or yes, it all goes towards the Historical Society, towards the museum. All right. Yep. So, how do they get a hold of one of these now? Well, um, you can uh, uh, contact me. Um, I'm on, on Facebook, but I also, uh, as far as uh, my name and phone number, is at the train station. They're uh, showing that uh, we're closed now, but when we were open during the summer till the 3rd of September, and the sheet is still there, but they can contact me if, if need be. Um, I can even give you uh, my home phone and 518-298-2574 uh, you know, if they're interested in a calendar or if they're interested in uh, a private tour up at the uh, uh, historical uh, Society call uh, building the, uh, the train call station. Anytime. No, not anytime. Three, During reasonable three, hours. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Bob will answer. Yeah. <laughs> and the answering machine will. <laughs> and I'll get it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now we're going to flip the camera back here to time travel to 2009. Unbelievable elephants drinking on Lake Street, just north of Sandy's Deli Building. Yeah, when they used to have the circuses every year, coming to town. Yes. That was not in 2009 that they had the circuses. No. <laughs> <laughs> like 1920. 1920s has been. He's he's old enough to know. So. He... <laughs> All right. Now we'll flip it over. And uh, here's a picture I've seen. Uh, 
Many times, in fact, I've got a, I've got one of these, the color version of it. The, uh, oh, the train station. Train station, yeah. The DNH train station in Ralph's Point. Yeah, if you look on face on uh, eBay once in a while, you'll see the that picture. Pop yeah, up, right. Will pop up. Yeah. And this has uh, more than just pictures. It's got some history in it too. Right. So that's mm -hmm. reminiscent of every, people who've ever seen the David Patrick's Champlain calendars. That's what he would do. He had, he had a, at least a decade or more <coughs> of calendars. But he put a whole lot of history in those, uh, along with the pictures. Uh, his Lovell Printing and Publishing Company, anywhere idea where that was? That was down uh, at the end of uh, Montgomery Street, right across from uh, like, uh, the Commons. Uh, the, the the beach that used to be there, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and that's where uh, the printing shop used to be. Was it on the beach side? No, nope, it was on the opposite on side. the opposite side. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So if you're going down Montgomery Street, can you? It's all little houses there. Be on your now. left. Yep. It'll be on your left as you get to right. the good road. Uh, different names and lots of stories mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Automobile, Ralph Point's first taxi, Peter Siegel, Pride and Joy. Yep. Uh, probably he was called Peter Sayan. Yeah, probably, you're right, the way they're... <coughs> well, these are 2009 calendars, but the history, it's more than just the pictures. It, every other page has... Uh, right, the back of side of it has the history on it. And, uh, <coughs> Interesting photos to go with it, but also some big pictures. A, a former Bannerman Eagle Pipe manufacturing supply building on Liberty Street. Yep. Liberty Street is the one uh, next to uh, St. Patrick's Church, uh, next, to, next to Columbus Building was. St. Patrick's. Uh, yep. That was a big uh, pipe factory there, and then uh, Venetian Blind after the pipe factory. Huh. No. If you can identify anybody in this photo, you're, you're old. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to August, it's again more history written here. And <clears throat> uh, we get to Sergeant Thomas Bort was the last caretaker to live in the Fort Montgomery's caretaker's house. Yep. So there was a caretaker house out there. Mm hmm. <coughs> He probably left quite a while ago. We got a picture of uh, Harold Bort, youngest son of Thomas Bort. And we move now to November. And it looks like the Custom House, Miners Building. Uh, as it appeared in Lake Champlain to, to centenary of 1909. Uh, so probably the uh, Customs House at that point, right. I think. Right, yes. It says the Myers Building. Mm -hmm. uh, completed for F.W. Myers in 1907. Uh, Myers was a brokerage, and uh, the Customs were operating out of there, too. I know you see a lot of photos of uh, auctions of the vehicles, vehicles that were right. that caught from the smugglers <clears throat> right. in the yep. Prohibition days, yep. right in that area there. And a lot of old uh, photos of different folks. Uh, did you make the cut? No, you didn't make the cut. No. <laughs> yeah. People know. Sorry about it. <laughs> well, someday there'll be a calendar 100 years from now, and there'll be... Well, I don't, John. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, he's got all these further Just pages of history. a little bit of history, of history right? Uh, and it says, please help us save our railroad station. Uh, yeah, that's when he do it to um, use the calendar to promote to uh, raise money to help with the, the station. So we have a bunch of them left over, so if you just want the, the, the photos, and like I said, sooner or later, the dates will be the same as the future year. Right. <laughs> so you can use it, use it that year if you want. See how many times you have to cross off the year to <laughs> yeah. put another one in there, you know, to Every see. Six, seven years, you know. leap year kind of, <laughs> kind of messes it up there. Right. So. Um, Really mess it up. Come to decades. <laughs> <laughs> well, storm clouds over Fort Mon um, over Montgomery Street by Frank Party. Mm -hmm. local uh, uh, 
Uh, and store, yep, store owner, and uh, used to do a lot of postcards. And, yep, had a store right downtown. So those are still available <clears throat> as of this as of this recording here on October 15th. But uh, now there's only a few left apparently of the 2023 calendar. Hey, yes, and we we're talking about if we need to, we can have more printed. Oh, okay. So we only did a limited number of printing to see how they yeah. would go, and so you just so. got the hundred of these. Yeah, still two thousand, but the only ones. You know, we've done them through the years, but right. two thousand nine is the only ones that <laughs> we still have from the from the past. So okay. yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. So the, just like the pins that we that we have. You have pins available also? Yes. I noticed the Start at 2005 and then they go up through each year up to... I know Judy was, my wife Judy was up there looking at the, uh, the mugs and the glasses and no. so on. Yes, yeah. So. For the D&H. Yeah. Yep. So the museum is not open uh, during the winter months? Just no, we're, we usually open it up uh, during uh, museum days, uh, which is usually the third week of June, uh, that weekend. And then we usually go until the 3rd of September that we have it open. It's only, uh, we've been having it uh, on just on Saturdays from uh, 10 until 2. Um, and now we're, we're looking at when we got some of our visitors as far as a time frame or whatever. Because it's, it's starting to get hard to get volunteers to be able to, to, to sit there and take the time and, and be there. And you're not getting... You know, people that that are coming in, right? And, and they're all volunteers, and it's a Saturday <laughs> that you're taking. You know, we what we've done is with the, the ten to two is like two hour increments. You know, two people there, and then two people. Uh, yeah, uh, so, you know, and a lot of times it's been just one person that we've been able to have there while it's open. Yeah, well, summer is so short that you want to enjoy Everybody these weekends. Everybody is enjoying, and, uh, right? Uh, yeah. If you're yep. volunteering there, you're really <clears throat> right. making a yeah. And and during during that time frame too, we have it to where people are coming back into the village to visit relatives or whatever. So we try and have it open, especially on a Saturday, so it's not taking up their Sunday or uh -huh. travel time on a Friday to where they want them to come in and you know with everything that we have with pictures and and articles and stuff that uh, they come back and kind of reminisce of their early years when they were here in Ross's Point and left. Right. You know, so, yeah. Okay. <coughs> so it's called the Ross's Point and Champlain Historical Society, right? Yes. Yep. And that's why we, we, we wanted to see if we could get more also pictures of Champlain to include that and of course we're always looking for for volunteers we're always looking for people that want to join historical society so it's not just Ross's Point it's the Ross's Point Champlain Historical Society we'd like to promote the history of, of Champlain also along with Celine with 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 her uh, museum and you know share things back and forth whatever so that way it's, it's available to to residents of both villages okay um now you had this day here this afternoon for people to bring in some photos mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, you're making copies for them but you're also hoping to scan some for your own collection I right assume. yeah yes that, that's what uh, we were trying to do uh so we'll see how it how it operates or whatever we, we might do another one you know or later or whatever to, to see if maybe it's a nice weekend right so and it's nice outside and we're not going to have too many more and, and the colors are in the trees right and so people are traveling in that but we we wanted to put it out there to do this photo share at this time and then if, you know we will try again and, and have another one or whatever and see if we get a little more interest you know where people are not having a you know more towards maybe real early spring you know where everybody's not already getting their families going with the summer and, and doing things or whatever you know so the uh, your group doesn't have a, a facebook page or anything we yeah. do have do the ross point champlain historical society <laughs> facebook page yes we do have a facebook page and then us that are in the historical society we try and put it on our own pages as far as events that we might have uh, coming up whatever so
where people can go to that page and <coughs> right. information or, and contact mm -hmm. message the, the group. And right. And say, I've got the so. 700 and, great pictures that I think you'd love to see. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. And it's just like if, if somebody is, is interested in doing a program to where we can involve, you know, the, the, the history of the area or whatever, uh, we're open to that also. You know, the contact us, you know, same like like me with the with the frog farm or whatever right. that we've done over the years. And if there's somebody that has some little bit of historical history that uh, you know from the area, we're more than welcome to see about maybe putting on a program and having them do the program either here or you know somewhere else that we can have the the public. Right. There to uh, to, to view that. it oh, yeah. and share it. Yes. Yep. All right. Anything else, Bob? That, uh, that no, I about? I can't think of anything else, Calvin. <laughs> uh, again, I I thank you for always including you know all these events uh, throughout the the county here, and uh, thank you for promoting it and getting the word out for us. It's 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 nice advertisement for us as well. I may not be able to get Judy out of here now. She's digging through the book. <laughs> So can you send her home about nine o'clock? Oh uh, well, uh, yeah, we're, we'll still be open then, and when, once we close the doors, we'll we'll send her home. <laughs> oh, you, you want us to give you a call? Give me a call. Yeah. <laughs> Come pick her up. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Bob. Okay. <laughs> I'll conclude our brief look at this uh, museum event today at the American Legion here in Rouse's Point on Pratt Street, <coughs> down the road a piece. Uh, about a block and a half away is where the museum is, DNH, from a DNH train station. I want to thank Bob and Brandon for taking and giving time to uh, chat with us on this busy afternoon. And thanks for watching and supporting viewer supported local television, Hometown Cable.